Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about stagflation. We will see what is stagflation and how does it occur. So the main points of this presentation are going to be what is stagflation, how stagflation occurs in the economy, and how to get out of stagflation. What are the cures of stagflation? So what is stagflation? Stagflation, in simple words, is a condition of slow economic growth or high unemployment, which is accompanied by a high or rising inflation. Now, why is stagflation unusual in the economy? For that to understand, I would refer you to my presentation on inflation and unemployment the link would be given in the description. Just to brief, briefly point out that usually growth and increase in employment opportunities in the economy involves an increase in credit or money supply in the economy, that is higher inflation. Whereas a falling economic growth or increasing unemployment in the economy involves a decrease in credit or a credit destruction in the economy, that is lower inflation. However, stagflation, ironically, involves increase in credit or money supply in the economy, relative, important to note down the word relative, relative to growth or employment, or in other words, supply in the economy. So credit and money supply are increasing relative or the credit and money supply are more relative to the supply of goods and services in the economy. So that's why st stagflation is unusual in the economy. Let's have a look at a scenario. Here, let's say a very important product in economic activity some, somehow observes a supply decline. That means the prices of that a great input product would rise. A rise in prices would increase the cost of production of the goods in the economy. That would mean to produce the same amount of goods, you need more credit. So the credit requirement actually goes higher. Whereas that would mean that for the same amount of supply, there is a price rise in the economy. Now, because of the price increase in the economy, in a normal economic course of action, what happens? The demand correspondingly goes down. Now, as the demand goes down, so does the supply of goods in the economy. And when the supply is going down, that means the credit requirement in the economy or the money supply in the economy also correspondingly goes down. In other words, demand goes down, supply goes down. So when the production is down, the money required to produce the goods are down. It, re it means the unemployment in the economy rises as you no longer, longer require the same amount of manpower to produce goods. So unemployment rises. And that would mean that in the short term, the price is rising. Inflation is not really rising because there's a difference between inflation and price rise. And again, I would refer to the presentation on inflation, where it, the link is in the description. Inflation is the rise in money supply relative to the goods and services of the economy. Price rise is just one of the consequences of inflation. So overall inflation does not really rise as in the medium term at least the credit or the money supply as you've seen is going down. Growth slowdown? Yes, the growth slowdown occurs. Stagflation is not occurring in a normal course of economic action. However, let's take the same scenario and this time, let's introduce a factor. 
So here also, like previously, the demand for goods and services comes down because of the increase in prices. However, unlike previously, this time around, the central banks intervene in the market and reduce the interest rates. As a result of which, unlike previously again, when the credit or the money supply reduced in the economy, this time because of the, re of, of the reduction in interest rates, the credit or the money supply in the economy either remains the same or more likely increase in the economy. Now this credit or money supply doesn't go into the factories to produce more goods because the demand for those goods and services are lower and hence they don't produce any real employment but they go into sectors other than that. They go as a tool for wealth transfer to the producers of the commodity that has seen a supply shock. So there's a wealth transfer happen from the consumers of that commodity to the producers or they go into the asset markets, can be financial assets, can be real estate, which bloat in prices. This is where the price increase happens and it filters down into the economy further. So, the supply of real goods and services don't really increase and rather come down as a response of lower demand. Since the supply of real goods and services come down, no longer the same manpower is required as previously and hence the unemployment in the economy goes up. So, in other words, inflation in the economy, yes, it goes up. Why? Because the credit relative to the supply of goods and services in the economy increases. Unlike previously, this time the price increase happens in the medium term. So, it's more sticky. If you notice the last time when there was no central bank intervention, the price increase was only short-term phenomenon. There is certainly, as we see, a growth slowdown. So the growth is coming down, employment opportunities are coming down, inflation is increasing, and hence, we see stagflation in the economy. Let's take a second scenario. Here, the government increases its fiscal deficit by the crowding out phenomenon. Kindly check the presentation on the crowding out for more details, link in the description. Here, the government increases its fiscal deficit, or in other words, increases its expenses over the revenues that it receives by issuing debt. This debt is bought by the domestic private investors in the market. So in other words, little new money is created and out of the same pool of money, the government extracts a greater amount. That means in other words, crowding out is occurring on the monetary side. What does that translate to? Well, since out of the same pool of money, the government is taking more interest rates rise in the economy. That means that for the private sector, the interest rates are rising and the amount of credit availability for the private sector is coming down. However, the overall credit in the economy is still the same or may even rise a little, but certainly still the same. It's only for the private sector that it has come down as the government is extracting more of its share. That means the investment in the private sector comes down or in other words the supply of goods in the economy comes down even as the demand increases. And why is the demand increasing? Because the government is spending more. 
So demand increases and since the private sector is investing less, the supply either remains the same or most more likely comes down. So have a look at the scenario. The overall credit in the economy is either the same or slightly increases. Demand is increasing, but the supply in the economy is most likely coming down due to the lack of private sector investments. And hence, there's price rise in the economy. Inflation is possibly rising in the economy. Growth is certainly coming down because of lack of supply in the economy, new supply in the economy and employment opportunities. And so, stagflation is looking, hitting the economy. So we have seen two scenarios where stagflation is occurring in the economy. One, where in the wake of a supply shock, the central bank intervenes, and here, the government intervenes by increasing its fiscal deficit. So, how can stagflation be then actually cured? Simple, by the reversing the actions of the entities who, in the first place, were the reasons for stagflation. So, the government should reduce its fiscal deficit. However, if the stagflation is mainly due to supply shock, and, and as a result of which loose monetary policies of central bank, then apart from fiscal deficit cut, we would also need to reduce the credit in the economy or money supply, in other words, in the economy, by increasing interest rates or what we call reverse of quantitative easing, which is quantitative tightening in the economy. As a byproduct of this, of course, that growth will decline as the supply reduces, and it's, uh, as first of all, as, as, as a consequence of this, the demand will reduce, and as a result of which, the supply reduces further, resulting in a credit decline. So the growth will certainly decline as a result of these actions, there's no way out of it. So in conclusion, stagflation strikes the economy when the central bank interferes with loose monetary policy or the government increases its fiscal deficit by crowding out the private sector investment and increasing the demand. This reduces supply in the economy even as demand increases, thus increasing relative credit in the economy. Stagflation, as we have seen, can be cured by cutting down credit supply, reducing fiscal deficit, or a combination of both depending upon what really started it to begin with. So thank you very much for watching this presentation. Do subscribe if you like such content and comment in case of any questions. Thank you.